Hey guys, welcome back to another session on C programming. In today's session, we'll discuss about integer types such as char and int and type modifiers such as signed and unsigned. And most importantly, we'll discuss about the wrap up behavior of both char and int data types. In C, to declare a character variable, we have to use the keyword char. Here, this char keyword specifies this variable is a character variable. In C, each character variable is one byte in size and can store the characters that are given in this ASCII table. Let's implement an example program to understand more about char data type. Open your code editor. Here, I am going to declare a new character variable. Let's say the name of this variable is holder. Now, I want to store a character in this character variable. How can I do that? To store a character in a character variable, just assign the character by enclosing it in single quotes. For example, here I want to store character A into this character variable. So just assign by keeping it in single quotes. Now we have stored the character A in this character variable. Now let's see how to print this character variable. To print a character variable, we have to use %c as a format specifier. Now, I want you to understand few important things. Here, we have assigned a character constant to this character variable. In compilation stage, when compiler sees this character constant, it will store the ASCII value of this character in this variable. For example, here, the ASCII value of character A is 97. So, during compilation stage, instead of storing this character, the ASCII value of this character will get stored in a character variable. That is the main reason why DNSHE added the char data type into the family of integer data types. We can see the ASCII value in this character variable just by using %d as a format specifier. So here we are assigning character constant a to this character variable. The ASCII value of this character a is 97. If we print this variable, we have to get 97 as an output. Let's check whether we are getting 97 or not. Compile and execute this program. See, we got 97 as an output, which is nothing but an ASCII value of character A. Here, instead of using this character constant, you can directly assign the ASCII value of this character to this character variable. For example, the ASCII value of character A is 97. So, I am directly assigning this ASCII value to this character variable. And here I am using percentile as a format specifier. If I execute this program, I have to get 97 as an output. See, we got 97 as an output. In the same way, now if you give percentile C here, we have to get character A as an output. See, we got character A as an output. So, what's happening here? Why we are getting two different values when we use percentile c and percentile d. Let's see about that. If you notice here, we have two different statements. The meaning of these two statements is almost same. For both of these two statements, 97 will get stored in this variable. And the binary representation of 97 is 0, double one, double zero, double zero one. This is how it will get stored in computer memory. Now, when we use percentile d, as a format specifier in printf, printf will convert this binary value back to the decimal value and it will directly print the decimal value onto the screen. Whereas if you use percentile c as a format specifier, printf will convert this binary value to decimal value and it will check the equivalent ASCII character of this decimal value. For example, here we got 97 as a decimal value. The equivalent character of this 97 is small a. That's the reason when we use percentile c, we got small a as an output. I hope you are clear about this concept. In C, the range of char and int data types depends upon the type modifiers. They are signed and unsigned. This is the syntax that we should need to follow to specify the type modifier when we are declaring a variable. To use a type modifier in your program, just prefix it to the data type. The major difference between signed and unsigned type modifier is 
If the variable has sign type modifier, then it is capable to store both positive and negative values. Because out of 8 bits, the most significant bit is particularly reserved to store the sign of the value. If the variable is holding positive value, then the most significant bit contains 0. And if the variable is holding a negative value, then the most significant bit contains 1. The range of the signed care is minus 128 to 127. Because by using these 7 data bits and 1 signed bit, we can store a total of 128 negative values and 128 positive values, including 0. If you understood the concept of cat data type, then there might be a question rolling up in your mind. That is, we already know that character variables store the ASCII values of the characters given in this ASCII table. If you closely look at these ASCII values, there is no negative ASCII values in this ASCII table. When there is no negative values, then what is the necessity of reserving one bit to store the sign of the values? So, specifying type modifier as signed for a character variable has really no use. Even though if you specify it as signed, you will get 7 data bits to store the data of the variable. With these 7 data bits, you can store a total of 128 positive values including 0. With these 128 positive values, you can represent all the 128 characters in this ASCII table. And next, we have unsigned type modifier. Variables declared with unsigned type modifier has no bits reserved to store the sign of the value. So, the variables that are declared with unsigned type modifier are capable to hold only positive values. They cannot store a negative value. So, the range of unsigned variables is 0 to 255. Now, the question is, is there any necessity of using unsigned type modifier for a character variable? Yes, there is. Apart from normal ASCII table, there is an another ASCII table called extended ASCII care set. In this extended ASCII care set, we have a total of 128 characters. Those values are ranging from 128 to 255. This ASCII care set contains the characters of different other languages. Whereas, primary ASCII table contains the characters of only English language. So, to use the characters of this ASCII care set, then we need the remaining 8th bit. In case of sign type modifier, the 8th bit is particularly reserved to store sign of the value. So, you cannot store these characters with the help of sign type modifier. In this case, you must and should use unsigned type modifier. Now, let's write an example program that reads character as an input from user and print its previous character onto the screen. For example, if I give input character as b, then the output should be the previous character of b is a. Open your code editor. Here, I am declaring a new variable. Let's say the name of the variable is care holder. For better interactiveness, before prompting user for input, let's print a message onto the screen. The message is enter a character. Now, to read input from user, I am going to use scanner function. In my previous sessions, I have explained how to read input from user by using scanf. To read character input from user, we have to use percentile %c as a format specifier and pass the address of character variable to the scanf. Now we have to find the previous character of the character entered by user. We know that character variable stores the ASCII value of given character. For example, if I give character b as an input, then the character variable stores its ASCII value that is 98. So to get character A as an output, we have to subtract 1 from this 98. Let's see how to do that. Here subtract 1 from the input entered by user. Now let's print it onto the screen. To print a character, we have to use percentile %c as a format specifier. And Pass the character variable to the printf. Compile and execute this program. Enter the character input. I am entering b as an input. The previous character of b is a. So we have to get a as an output. See, we got a as an output. So from this program, we understood how to read a character input and how to print a character as an output. I would like to suggest you to practice these three problems to get more understanding on cat data type. In the
the first problem, read a character as input from user and print its ASCII value as an output. Whereas in the second program, read a lowercase character as input from user and print uppercase character as an output. Whereas in third problem, read an uppercase character as input from user and print the lowercase character as an output. That's it. If you solve these three problems, then you'll get a better understanding on cat data type. These are the few important points that you should remember when you are using a CAD data type. That's all about CAD data type. Now let's see about in data type. To declare an integer variable, we have to use keyword int. The size of this integer variable depends upon the compiler we are using. In our previous session, I have explained when we assign a value to integer variable, how it will get stored in its memory space. Hope you watched that video. And an integer variable with sign type modifier has one bit reserved to store sign of the value and it can store up to 2 power 31 negative values and 2 power 31 positive values. Coming to unsigned int, here we don't have any bit reserved to store sign of the value. It can store up to 2 power 32 positive values. We know that the character and integer variables are capable to store only the values within this range. What happens if we store the value out of this range? Let's see an example. If you look at this example, here I have declared two integer variables. Let's say the name of these variables are variable1 and variable2. Variable1 is of type signed because if you want to specify any type modifier for char and in data type, by default signed type modifier will be applied. And the second variable is of type unsigned int. Here to the first variable I have assigned this value. But the maximum value that I can assign to a signed integer variable is 21474836647. But here I am assigning 648. Similarly, here for unsigned int variable, I am assigning 296. But the maximum value that we can assign is 295. And here I am printing these two variables. If you notice here, I have used percentile u as format specifier because for unsigned integer variable, we have to use percentile u as format specifier. Let's compile and execute this program. If you see the output, we got these values as an output. But we have not assigned these values, right? Let's see why we got these values as an output. If you look at this example, here I have assigned this value to this variable. If you clearly observe, this is the first value which is not in the range of integer. Then the first value which is in the range of integer will be assigned to this variable. That's the reason why we got this value as an output. Similarly, if you assign the second value which is not in the range of integer, then the second value which is in the range of integer will be assigned. The same behavior applied for unsigned int also. You can try some example by assigning the values which are not in the range to the integer data type and see the output. Hope you understand this. There is a strong reason behind this wrapper behavior. To understand that, you need to know how negative values are stored in computer. If you understand this concept, then you will get a clear picture on both signed and unsigned type modifier. In our next session, I will explain you how negative values are stored in computer and we will solve some examples on both signed and unsigned type modifier. That's it for this session. Thank you for listening. See you later in next session.